Hello and welcome to another tier list Tuesday. Today we are doing the playing cards of Bellatro. And no, this is not a joke. We are actually going to do a tier list of all the normal playing cards in the game. And the way we are approaching this, again, is like all tier list Tuesday. It's how useful each one of these cards is in the game for everything. I'm trying to take into consideration all 15 decks, all 10 stakes, taking into consideration, you know, seated runs, going for high scores, playing challenges. Basically, when you take the holistic view of Bellatro, how people play it, how people have fun with it, completionist, what cards are you using and how often are they useful? So for this, we're going to start at two, work our way through all the way to ace. And without further ado, let's jump into this much requested tier list. We're going to start with twos, and the way I'm going to do this is basically talk about the suits once, so this will be its own little section of the video. I consider diamonds to be by far the worst suit. When you look at the jokers that are associated with diamonds, they're just not as good. I mean, the jewel's kind of cool to add economy, but it's not helpful in most circumstances, so diamonds are probably going to be the worst. I think spades and clubs and hearts are all really in the same tier. And the reason for this is clubs and spades have a lot of benefits. They have really good jokers associated with them. Plus, blackboard is a massively important and useful joker that you can use on quite a few stakes, including high stakes runs. So I think it's important to note. Also, when you look at smear joker, the fact that they work together a lot more harmoniously than I think the hearts and diamonds work together, they're very good. Now, what allows hearts to even compete with those two considering all the synergies they have is bloodstone when you think about what bloodstone is it's a one in three chance of getting times two so as long as you're playing three hearts on average you're basically getting the duo joker from bloodstone and now when you start playing flushes or you start re-triggering your hearts you're getting much much more than that so hearts can still be very valuable clubs and spades are very valuable so that is how i'm looking at it and that's probably going to flow for most of these. A couple of these are weighted a little bit more due to their high score potential. And they might have different rankings for their suits. But in general, hearts, clubs, and spades are probably going to be in the same tier for each rank. And the diamonds are going to be a tier or two below that. So let's start with twos. Twos are a pretty useful card in the game. I think you put it in the good category. I wouldn't quite say they are elite. But... I do think they have a huge spot in the game. Part of this is due to Wii Joker. They have a very specific Joker just for twos that scales extremely highly for chips. And not many Jokers scale well with chips. I think Castle and Wii are really the only two scaling uh, chip Jokers. And, of course, Bull, if you have an economy build, that scale properly, you know, antis 1 through 8 and beyond. So the fact that... Twos are a big portion of that. I mean, one third of the good <laughs> scaling chip jokers, you need twos to make it work. I mean, there you go. That's why they are so important. They also, of course, have hack. They work with Fibonacci. They're not an odd card, which I do give a, a lot of praise to Odd Todd and how important it can be in a run. But even Steven works with them. So the fact that, you know, hack and Fibonacci are here with it. And of course, we joker, I think it puts it in the good tier. Moving on to threes. It's going to be the same. It's a good tier card. It's very similar to the twos minus, obviously, the Wii Joker. And one great thing about threes is if you are looking for hack, I think the fact that it works with Odd Todd and Fibonacci, meaning each one, if you're going to re-trigger it with hack, is getting those extra chips and those extra molt. That's what makes it even with the fact that twos have, again, Wii Joker, and it has its own specific rare Joker that it's helpful for so i think threes are pretty good you can build your deck around them it's a little bit hard to build your deck around any of these lower tier or uh lower rank cards in the very early game because they're not adding many chips but again if you get any fibonacci if you get a hack if you get something like that it becomes much easier fours you know they're not the worst thing ever i'm going to put them in the mid tier for the most part with again the diamonds being a tier below that the thing about fours is they're a, the only hack card that is not Fibonacci. And let me quickly, in case you're like, what are you talking about? Fibonacci plus is eight molt for twos, threes, fives, eights, and aces. And then hack re-triggers all two, three, fours, and fives. 
So fours are solid. You can re-trigger them. You can turn them into glass and get re-triggers. You can get the re-triggers on the suits. So, you know, they're okay. And plus they do have the 10-4 Joker, which is honestly a pretty solid Joker for the early game or even low stakes difficulties. Um, the 10-4 Radio Joker adds four molt and 10 chips for every 10 and four played. So at least there's something there to help it, but it's not quite on the tiers of twos and threes in my opinion. Not the worst thing you could be playing with. It has some utility, but it's also not the best. Fives are basically everything I said about threes. You can apply to fives. It's an odd card. It's a Fibonacci card. It's a hack card. It also is starting to get into the realm five, six, seven, eights, where there's a ton of straight possibilities. It's kind of the top end of your ace through five straight, and then it's a bottom end of a five through five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't think for a second. A bottom end of that straight. So quite a bit of straight potential. Not that I think that straight builds are very viable in this game. But, you know, you should take that into consideration a little bit when looking to play a card. There's nothing too special about five specifically in terms of jokers that help just a five. But the fact that it can fit in so many different ways, once again, in a straight build. Or with your hack, Todd Fibonacci build. I think it's solid. I think you could definitely do worse than building your entire deck around fives. And I just did a whole hack class five build and was able to get into the billions before endless. So definitely possible, definitely a solid card. And if you played the demo, these cards <laughs> are, were the God cards in the demo because hack was really the only re-triggering um, joker in that demo. But we're in 1.0 now, we're in 1.0 land and this is where they land in my opinion. Moving on to sixes. Now we are moving on to what I consider either the worst or second worst card in the game. All sixes are going to be in the trash and delete category. I don't care about the suits. I am never, ever, ever playing around sixes. The only joker that really helps sixes is six cents. And while six cents is cool, you know, you play your six, you deleting a spectral card. It's not that viable. It's not that useful. Making one spectral card around per six that you have, which you then have to be making sixes while simultaneously destroying them with six cents, it's not that great. It's also a joker that's not like you can blueprint it. You can't brainstorm it. So it's not like you can copy six cents ability and all of a sudden get two spectral cards around um, like you could with a vagabond uh, with tarot cards. So six cents in general, my thoughts on it is it's a absolutely terrible joker. I think I think sixes are an absolutely <laughs> terrible card because there's really no way to play around them. Basically, you can play even Steven and that's it. That's the only thing that's gonna benefit it out of six cents. And once again, I don't think that six cents is really even that good or viable. You're probably going to just delete them. So oftentimes if I have an early hangman and I have sixes in my hand, that's the card I am deleting. Right beside it are sevens. Now, the one thing about sevens and sixes <clears throat> is at least they have good straight potential. Again, they're right there in the middle of the rink, so they're used for straights all over the board. However, other than that, there's not much purpose for them. And the fact that straights, at least in the current state of the game, are just really not a viable play strategy, they're not useful. Um, nothing really helps sevens, again, outside of like Odd Todd. And you have even seven for sixes, but sevens don't even have something like a six cents. They they really have nothing at this point. I imagine local thunk is definitely looking at that when he's looking for this big update. But right now, sixes and sevens, those are absolutely getting deleted. And I actually usually delete sixes first because at least I can turn sevens into eights. And that's our next card we're about to talk about. And eights are a Fibonacci card. Eights for me are very similar to fours. They're a mid-tier card. They're not the worst thing in the world to build around and you can have a deck. They do have the eight ball joker, which in its current state is complete and utter trash, but local thunk has already stated that that card is gaining a major buff and every plate eight has a chance of creating a tarot card. So that's going to wildly changes, change eights as a viable rank in Bellatro. Um, so I'm going to take that a little in consideration since we have that information now, but in general, <clears throat> the one thing eights really have going for them is their Fibonacci ability. And again, Fibonacci is a solid, uncommon joker that adds plus eight molt whenever these cards are played. However, eights don't really have anything outside of that. They have nothing to re-trigger them. They work with even Steven. They're a decent straight uh, potential card, but all in all, you probably want to build your deck around something else. But 
hey, I'll take it. And especially when you're talking about just passing low or middle stakes, eights are a pretty viable option. Moving on to nines, nines sit in this weird category where definitely not as good as eights. Definitely, I think, better than six and sevens. So I'm going to put them actually all in this category, although I will, again, mention that I think the diamond version would definitely be the worst out of these. In fact, I, I still will put the diamonds all the way down here. You know, what do knights have going for them? They have Odd Todd, really, which, again, as I mentioned, I think is important. And I think Odd Todd is a great chip joker, is one of the few good chip jokers. While it doesn't, you know, scale extremely well, gain it early in playing cards, flushes and stuff that have nines, sevens, fives, threes, and aces really makes it easy um, to get past those early rounds. But I digress. The only thing nines have are cloud nine. Cloud nine, of course, is a decent economic joker. And if you can build a few nines in your deck and you do get cloud nine, you could be getting, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a round. And all of a sudden you're scaling very quickly. However, I find myself, even the one time I got this build working, I instantly <laughs> stopped making nines and moved and used that giant economy to buy tarots and buy jokers that were helping other cards. Because at the end of the day, if you're going for a high score run or even just trying to finish off the round and the high stakes run or whatnot it's probably not going to be with nines because not enough things benefit the nine card to help you win to help you get a high score to use them in challenges etc um again decent economic card if i was forced to choose between building it a six seven or a nine build i'm taking nine every day of the week but again it's, it's still a clear tier below the rest that we've talked about so far next we move on to tens and tens really don't have a ton going for them other than them being a high rank which means they have a good base amount of chips in 10 chips they do work with 10-4 they work with even steven and they can be involved with face cards but i really think the biggest benefit of 10s is they're close to jack queens and kings which means strength tarot cards which increase increases the rank by one um work very well with 10s because you can turn them into a jack and then that jack can become a queen and then a king or an ace uh, other than that, it doesn't have a ton going for it. I do think for me, it's a mid card. Like it, it's definitely not bad. If I got an erratic deck with tons of tens, I'm like, all right, I can definitely work around this or I can figure out a way to change them in the jacks if I need to, or, or, or figure out a way. Um, but at the end of the day, I still don't even think they're as good as two, threes and fives where you have that re-trigger ability with a hack joker. Tens don't have anything to really re-trigger them other than obviously red seals again they are easy to mold and move up in rank because they're so close to those good face cards that we're about to get into but all in all it's a solid card i think it's pretty solid for the lower and mid stakes i think at high stakes honestly this list is mattering less and less because high stakes in its current form is so much about pairs and high card builds where these aren't going to matter so honestly with looking at ranks i am kind of you know not taking high stakes as much into account because i don't think high stakes it matters as much i think all these kind of get put in the same box as you're probably going for a high card or a pair build or in the rare occasion you are shaping your deck it, it's over a very specific card that we're going to get to later um but yeah all in all tens middle of the road right I'm going to use them more than nine, sixes, and sevens, absolutely. But I do think two, threes, and fives have a lot more potential. You know, it, at the end of the day, again, the way I'm approaching this is, let's say you got a very early uh, Arcana pack. And it has a Hangman, and it has a Death. And you got all these cards. Well, this is the order in which I would be Deathing, or in the order in which I'd be Hangmanning. Meaning I would be destroying these cards first and then moving up and accidentally put the speed one tier lower but hearts clubs and spades as we said should be in the same tier and then diamonds a tier lower so moving on to jacks jacks very much in my head are on the border of good and elite tier i do think i'm going to put them in good um similar to tens what i think one of their biggest benefits are is the fact that they can easily be strength into queens and kings which we'll get into in a second but the big thing here is as soon as you get the face cards you get to sock and buskin which means they now have a re-trigger ability jacks also have hit the road jack which means if you can make a bunch of jacks you then discard them and you get x molt for 
that Joker hit the road jack. I believe it's 0.5x molt per discard jack. So if you're able to discard even just four of them, you're getting two times molt. Now the issue with hit the road jack, and the reason why I'm using it less, less, and less is if you do make a deck with a bunch of jacks, you want to play them, right? Like you want to play the four or five of a kind. Well, you can't if you're using hit the road jack. You ideally are discarding those jacks. Um, obviously, you could discard a few and then play your hand, but it creates this weird thing where it's like I'm discarding them, but I want to keep them in my hand. So hit the road jack is not the greatest joker to even play around. It can get you through some runs, um, but it's definitely not really needed for a high score. It's probably not one of the pieces of the puzzle or the technology as Blotro University would say. In my opinion, Jacks are very solid cards. They have good potential in the fact that they're easily strengthened into some of the elite tier cards. Um, and again, they work with Sock and Buskin. So one of my first high scores in 1.0 was with Red Seal Glass Jacks and Sock and Buskin. So absolutely you have good potential like you would with a 2, 3, and 5 because they have that potential with the hack and of course there's also scary face joker uh, another downside that we're going to talk about with all face cards is there's a lot of boss points that affect them you have the plant which completely debuffs them which is terrifying <laughs> when you build around them then you have the one where they're um, handed to you face down that one's not as big of a deal as i mean you know which ones are your face cards and if you've been building around a certain one you have a good idea of like okay well i'll play these ones uh the lower end or the higher end and you know, probably end up with a full house or four of a kind or whatnot. Moving on to the queens. Queens are some of the best cards in the game. Um, not quite the best cards, but they are very, very good. Everything we talked about, Jax applies to queens, except, of course, hit the road jack, which is specifically to Jax. Now, the queen specific joker of shoot the moon is not good. I do not recommend playing Shoot the Moon. It gives you additive molt for holding queens in your hands. And um, unlike a Baron, which does the times, basically makes all kings steal in a way, but you can also still steal that king. It's just not nearly the same benefit because plus 13, plus 13, plus 13 for three queens in your hand is 39 molt, but times even by 1.5, three times can be massive if you have that, you know, even a decent about a base molt. But what queens do have going for them that jacks don't is they count for Tribulet, one of the most powerful legendary jokers in the game that adds times two molt for every time uh, this card is triggered. So Tribulet, very big part of the high score personal best <laughs> kind of community. And when you're trying for those super, super high scores, Tribulet can often be a big part of that puzzle. Of course, queens work with Sock and Buskin. It works with Scary Face. They work with Minus Mask. That's another face card joker that we failed to mention with Jax. And Minus Mask can be huge, whether it's with um, Vampire, where you're making them gold and then immediately taking it off and turning it into x Molt with Vampire, or just making them gold and then keeping them in your hand and building a huge economy. Face cards are very powerful in the game. So much so, I almost want to move the jacks up, but I do want to make a clear distinction that I think queens are better, and then there is a clear distinction between them and our next card, which are kings. The best cards in the game, absolutely, hands down, to the point where I'm willing to put diamonds up here because kings are so, so, so elite. There's so much in their own tier, in my opinion, at least when it comes to high scores. And they have the best jokers in the game on their side. They sock and busk it. They have Scary Face, they have Midas Mask. They hit with Tribulet because Tribulet applies to Queens and Kings, but they also have Baron. The idea that your Kings just instantly have the effect of a steel card of times 1.5 molt, and then if you want, you could steal them, you could red seal them, you can mix that with Mime, and all of a sudden your King is adding two point, was it 2.25 molt twice in your hand? They're insane, and you're not even having to play those Kings to do that. Whenever I am looking to shape my deck for a high score run, or even honestly shape my deck at lower medium stakes, I am looking to make kings. If you watched the tournament videos, that two of them are out at the time of recording this, and two are coming out later in this in the week. If you're watching this tier list video in the future, go ahead and check out those tournament videos. It was a very very fun time at the Blotro Invitational. You'll notice every single round, I'm immediately going after kings. Those are the cards I want to shape my deck around. They have the highest potential in the game. They are a tier among themselves, at least when it comes to high scores. Now, 
when we're taking the entirety of Bellatro into consideration, I do think aces minus the ace of diamond, which I'll put in the elite tier, because I do think it, the diamond ace deserves to have that distinction versus the diamond king is still so good that it should stay in the goat tier list. It's still up there. And the reason is there are a lot of really great benefits to aces. One of them, they don't de deal with the same debuffs and boss blinds that the face cards do. The face cards, of course, get all those buffs, all those re-triggers. Aces don't have to deal with that while still being extremely high. They do work in this quote-unquote superposition way where you can play an ace through five uh, straight or an ace through ten straight. Now, that's not the end of the world. That's not the end-all, be-all, but it is nice to have that flexibility that they can work with low cards and they can work with high cards. They have a very good Joker and Scholar, which adds the four molt and 20 chips. That is fantastic for a single card. Um, and then a real big part of this, to be completely honest, is Grim, the Spectral card. <clears throat> it's so nice to reliably use that Spectral card, delete one card, and know I'm getting two aces. It's not like Familiar, where I can get three random face cards, and if I was building around, around kings, I may end up with three jacks. I know I'm getting aces when I use Grim. That's often what sparks an ace run for me. And I found, honestly, again, when just trying to finish a run at mid to higher stakes, I end up shaping my deck around aces a little bit more often than I do with kings, just because I'm not going to have to deal, again, with as many annoying boss blinds. I think it can be a little bit more reliable, especially having that grim spectral card in your back pocket. It does add 11 chips, which is the highest in the game. It's got a very solid early joker and scholar that's common. Um, and there's... A bunch of other benefits, including the fact that it works with Fibonacci, unlike, you know, any face card. It works with Odd Todd, a really solid chip joker. The only thing aces are really lacking is the ability to be re-triggered by any kind of joker, and that's something you have to do yourself with a red seal. But I think despite that, there's so many great benefits to aces, and it can fit in so many different builds. It works well with flush builds. It can work okay in straight builds. works very well if you obviously can make a bunch and just play five-of-a-kind builds. So yeah, in general, at least in the past two, three weeks of gameplay, I really have been building around aces more than kings. Again, when I'm going for just finishing a run, if I want any endless, any high score potential, immediately shift that ideology and move towards kings because the power that kings have is off the freaking charts. So let's take a look at this final tier list. It's clear. I don't value six and sevens. It's also clear. I think diamonds are a clear cut below the rest of the suits. You know, the nines are a card that's, I think, bad, but it, it always could be worse, at least when it comes to nines. We're looking at fours, eights, and tens is kind of that middle tier of card that you could build around. It, it could be viable. You could win a few runs. Um, it's probably not going to kill you to build around these. Then we have the good cards with the twos, threes, fives, and jacks, I think all of which have good enough benefits that justify, you know, if you, for some reason, have early jokers that fit with these, go ahead and build your run around it. You won't regret it. Queens are, you're beginning to get into that elite tier of cards that go ahead, build around that. You're going to be happy. And then kings and aces are just that. And all be all, those are the cards you probably should be building around if you have any say in the matter before you really have your jokers set and whatnot. So let me know in the comments where you agree, where you disagree. I'll link to this template. And this is the first template I actually had it made myself. I found it online by just Googling Bellatro card template. So I'll link to it and then shout out to whoever, whoever made this. I couldn't find it on the tier list page. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like. If you did not, a dislike, please hit subscribe if you've been enjoying the Bellatro content. Thank you so much again for a thousand subscribers. I know I released the thousand subscriber special, but I just wanted to say it formally in another video that I was recording. Appreciate all the support and we'll see you for the next one very soon.